Well, when Michael asked me to be part of Foreclosed, um, I knew immediately that I had to be a part of this project. Um, not only do I know an awful lot of people who have been downsized or struggling with a financial crisis or underemployment, but in recent years, my husband and I have gone through this as well. A number of years ago, uh, we built a place of retreat, a ranch north of Los Angeles, for people to come and work on creative projects and do their books and screenplays and work on music. It's for leaders to come and pastors to come and kind of get healed up and refreshed and restored. And it was an amazing vision that we felt like we had to be the ones to fund it. We didn't ask for any help. So it was amazing, but it about killed us. And um, just about a year and a half ago, we finally have sold this property, but it was on the market forever and didn't sell. And so we just was looking down the line and we realized, you know, we don't have a whole lot of more time before we're gonna really be in trouble financially. We aren't now, but we will be. And so we had the ranch on the market forever, it didn't sell. Finally, we bit the bullet and said, okay, I'm willing to make this sacrifice. We're gonna sell our home in Los Angeles too. Put it on the market, it sold in a week. A week later, we get an offer on the ranch. So we were homeless, uh, having sold both properties uh, within a matter of a week. And the reason this is, um, I think timely for this topic too, for foreclosed, is that the whisper of God to me for about the year before was, I want you mobile and agile. He said, I really just want you to simplify your life. I need you to downsize your life. I want you movable and agile so you can go wherever it is I send you on a dime. And I actually think that this is sort of a, a word for a lot of people right now. God's moving people around a lot. And He's calling us to tighten up, to get rid of stuff, relinquish things that are bearing us down and burdensome to us. Stop trying to work so hard to hang on to a lifestyle when actually the lifestyle is sort of killing us. And so when we did that and suddenly we found ourselves, you know, without a home, without all of a bunch of stuff all around us, without a ton of responsibility. Um, it has been a huge uh, lightning in our hearts. And um, it's been hard in some ways. Uh, we're renting for the first time in my adult life, and I feel extremely irresponsible, having been someone who owned a home for so many years. Now we're renting. But um, we are following what God has told us to do. and. Um, it is sometimes hard, you know, I'm still not earning the income I did all those years. I was doing tons of television and been on series after series. But I have come to know during this whole process, I've come to see God in a completely different way. Um, I've come to realize that I can trust Him in all things. Um, see, it's not too difficult to trust God if you don't have to, if you kind of rely on your own uh, ability to make things happen, your own capacity to earn an income. But when little by little he begins to strip things away and he says, just look to me, I want you to just to look to me for everything, we suddenly realize what's really important and what's not. And um, more than ever in these recent years, I understand Paul's words to the Romans when he said, for we know that in all things God works for the good, for those who love him and who've been called according to his purpose. And because now I have come to know and trust in a very personal way the comfort and security of God, not what I can provide, but who He is, I know that I can rest confident and secure when my life is shaken by unemployment or, or financial crisis or marital strain or um, health diagnosis or natural disasters. And because I've come to know and trust the God of comfort, I know now that we can trust Him in all manner of circumstances that are disappointing or heartbreaking or difficult or cause us fear. And now also, good old Apostle Paul, um, as he said, I think it was in Philippians, he said, I know the secret to being content that uh, I can be content whether I'm well fed or hungry, whether I'm in plenty or in need. He said, um, I have learned the secret to be content that I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. And um, 
I think for ourselves, my husband and me, and through other friends of mine who have gone through a stripping process, for you it may not be financial. Maybe for you it was the loss of a loved one, or the death of a dream, or um, a life circumstance that shook your world and caused you to have to think, God, do you love me? Are you here? Do you see me? But when we rely on the strength of God who, who gives us all that we need, we can then hang on to whatever life throws our way. No matter how shaking our world may feel to us, we can, we can rely on Paul's words again that says, what can possibly separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus? You know, will angels or demons, will famine, will heartache, will, will death, nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus. He's our strength. He's the rock upon which we stand. And we will find that we are strengthened in our inner man through all these difficult circumstances that he allows us to walk through. You know, when we are going through really tough times, we seem to have tunnel vision. All we can see is right here and now. We don't have the advantage of God vision, which is the long view. And um, when it's all said and done and over, we can look back and realize, oh, that's what this was about. Or oh, that's what he had in mind. Or that is what has been developed in me and established in me and strengthened in me. I had no idea I had to walk through that to get to where I am now, to be the person I am now. So at the time we're going through it, we can become full of fear. We can think we're being punished. We can think God has abandoned us or left us or can't see us. And it really does cause us fear. But um, we're assured in the Psalms, in Psalm 56, he says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? God is for you. And if he is for us, what can possibly be against us? So whatever it is you're going through right now, just know and trust that God, through all of the difficult circumstances, he's refining you, he's making you into the image of his son, he's establishing you, he's growing you, he's stretching you, enabling you to do the next thing that he has for you. His plans and purposes for you are great. So don't be afraid, just continue to trust in him as you walk. Many are familiar with Nancy from her years starring with Andy Griffith on the TV series Matlock and recent faith-based films. She's also a popular speaker and the author of two books. For more information about her books or to book Nancy to speak at your church, woman's group, or organization, go to www.nancystafford.com.